Cheetham Hill Road, Manchester, a place I've got a bit of a connection with. And these pictures are way before the time I'm talking about, just before James tries to make out I'm ancient. Anyway, my dad had a milk round on Cheat Mill Road, Express Dairies. And although I didn't deliver the milk with him, Friday night, around about 1976, you'd have found me running round one of the council estates at the back of Cheat Mill Road, collecting the milk money. We used to do loads of flats, and, and ironically, those flats were all named after Rivers, Hodder, Condor, Tame, Wenning, Medlock... <laughs> And they were around the St. Heliers and St. Asaph's Drives area. They're all pulled down now. Well, that's my connection with Cheetham Mill Road. Nine years old, running around that estate. Anyway, the night would finish, or the evening's work would finish, with my dad going in the Kildakin pub. There's the pub there. And there's the flats just in the background that we delivered to. Like I say, long since pulled down. Typical scenario, bottle of coke for me with a straw in and a bag of crisp sat in the car while my dad had a pint in the pub. Then, on the way home, call up the local chippy, meet me take a pie, and tip out all my tips that, I, that I'd made that night. Used to get tips off people. My dad added 50 pence to for me actual wages. And sometimes, when me and my mum counted it, I had almost a pound. Fantastic. Anyway, that was a long introduction to say that this week's video is in Cheetah Mill. Hello, my name is Martin. Welcome back to another video. One of John's gems, an old church on Cheetah Mill Road in uh, Manchester. What's it called, John? St Luke's, St. Luke's isn't it? Martin, yeah. St Luke's. So we took a look around. It's in a terrible state of repair. We got underneath it. We had a look round. So, so right, let's crack on. Let's go to church. St Luke's Church stands on the corner of Smedley Lane and Cheetah Mill Road, right by the main road, but blink and you'll miss it if you drive down Cheetah Mill Road. It looks like it was once a very proud and grand church, and it was. It dates back to 1839, um, and although the fact that it's listed, Grade 2, and it's now in the care of the Heritage Trust for the North West, it's in a terrible state of repair, as you can see from this picture here. In fact, only really the tower stands, the rest of the, the back of the church is completely fallen in. The most interesting part is the undercroft, which we will be going into. But in the meantime, let's take a look around the perimeter of the church, and we'll see if there's anything interesting to look at. the inside so we'll take a look in there down the altar so what they're actually planning to do with this I don't know because uh, like <laughs> the inside is out uh, and all the masonry as you can see is all over the floor wow well, yeah Look at them uh, columns there. It's a great two but the building it so is it? they'll probably have to try and keep it up the best they can. Probably have to try and keep some up won't yeah. they? What are you saying about Liverpool? There's like a bombed out church in Liverpool and you can go and watch like cinema like films and stuff and it's quite nice when it gets dark and the sun sets. Have you been? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Alright good. Let's nice. just go forward a little bit more. Um,
yeah, it's very dodgy standing underneath these things, you know, so um, yeah, not good. And now we're actually inside. I'm going to do a quick in and quick out for you. Just all rigged up, uh, rotten, and we're near the entrance now. I uh, see the main entrance is bricked up. So that's it basically, there's not a lot else to see really. But the columns as you can see down there, uh, not in a good way, if that's a weight bearing column, which it probably is. Right, so we'll, uh, we'll just have a look in here because uh, this is the, yeah, the back end here of the church. Um, and there's a gap in the brickwork there we'll go and take a look at. Ah, no, nothing. So it's just uh, no. yeah, it's just a cavity in it. Of the uh, would have been a fireplace, maybe. Was it a church? Yeah. Maybe a floor truss there. I always used to think the body was in here. But there's no it was in it was on the ground weren't it? Well yeah, but that mean it would have been in the brick. So there you go. Empty. And then it's actually got names on the outside. And there's another one there. Quite an expensive grave that isn't it? This one. Let's see who's in here. Sacred. Oh wait. 1855 this is the grave is uh, listed i have to move on because i think we're being watched we're right, we're right about on the main road um and probably shouldn't be in here but it's an old graveyard for god's sake what are we going to do so we just need to move swiftly and get what with the footage we need to get now looking at these old pictures from various years it looks like the church had a spire on the top and I've double checked and I've kind of agonised, but this last one, 1959, is the one that sort of confirms it for me. But it, the, the spire is now gone, but that, that is definitely on the corner there of Smedley Lane and Cheat Mill Road, that picture. Anyway, the church does have a claim to fame. We did look for one and we found one and it was John that found it. Uh, none other than the composer Mendelssohn played here. This newspaper clip here is taken from the Manchester Guardian, uh, 1847, 24th of April, 1847. And if you can read it, I think it reports on the fact that uh, Mendelssohn played here. Let's take a look at the Guardian reporting in more recent times, because they did a thing where they said something like, you know, so many years ago today, and they've re-reported it. Look at this. So... The Guardian, Manchester Guardian, reported it 24th of April 1847. A fatigued Mendelssohn gives an intimate organ recital to a large audience in Manchester. Um, he promised that he would play St Luke's organ in Cheatham Hill. Sounds like he was doing a bit of a tour, um, playing church organs. If you look at this other report here, it talks about... He wasn't keen on big audiences because he wanted to listen to the sound of the organ. Um, and he, he didn't want a lot of people milling around and talking. Um, so it was a, he, he wanted to limit it to as few people as possible. The auditors, I don't know why he calls them that, were extremely delighted and separated after listening to his performances with the deepest interest during an hour and a half, um, blah, 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 blah. And anyway, he also played in... Uh, Withington. It looks like there's another report here of him playing in Withington at St Paul's. So definitely a bit of a tour. Right, so that said, let's uh, take a look underneath. And underneath is more um, is more intact than above. Um, so we'll go underneath here and we'll take a look around. But first of all, are you thirsty? Because me and James are. Oh, geez, That's, that's a bit harsh. Right, brew time. Mm. It's another one of them videos where we've ta taken to film in a separate brew time because... We don't forget to do it. We don't think we forgot to do it. It's just it was a bit of a bugger to get in this church, weren't it? Yeah, it was... Um, Tearing of clothes sort of time, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. My yeah. new yeah. pants. Yeah. What? My new pants. Did you tear your pants? I tore my coat. Yeah. 
We had to be careful. Where we went in, it was busy, weren't it? So we had mm. to wait for a bit of a gap and go in. Not that we were going in to do any harm or anything. No, it was just, just like, exploring. you know, some people would have never said, what are you doing in there? And yeah. ultimately, we're just going in to take photos and okay. leave footprints. Yeah. Mm. That's all it was and tell you the story. Um, but, yeah, not a lot to the church was the pit that most no. of it's just like derelict. And I've probably shown you yeah. the, the Google Earth view of it and it's just like, Wrecked in it. I tried to find some, like, for, if anyone was famous in there. Would you? Buried. Well, you like doing that, don't you? Yeah. You're a bit of a connoisseur of graveyards, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to go to the doctors about your necrophilia. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, brew time. What have we got? What we have in? What, what's the tea? Right, I bought we, Right, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. We're at James's, right? So, yeah. mine, you tend to get the good tea. Tend, we tend to have Yorkshire tea because it's very good. Um... <laughs> I'd suspect that we're drinking some kind of budget tea. <laughs> Barry's tea. Oh, Barry's tea. But we can't say anything because Barry might be watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. is, is it it's, Irish? I don't know. It's not too bad, actually. Try it's not it. too bad. Oh, that's all right. Bit of a builder's brew. Yeah, it's nice. <clears throat> Biscuits. Got my nice little cup. Jamie. Jamie. You don't like being called Jamie. <laughs> that was the joke of the cup. Milk, chocolate, oaty biscuits. <laughs> for a second you think if I do that oh McVitie's yeah <laughs> oh, McVitie. you know what I said about the tea so let me show you the make right Belmont he's <laughs> a posh maker <laughs> yeah Belmont's finest cookies <laughs> available at oh, there's probably nothing wrong with them to us but yeah I'm a bit of a fan so right so we oh you've got one out already yeah don't go in the back the don't go in there I've got one out already <laughs> As a lock on this, you can only have one. Yeah, nice. Anyway, we can't concentrate on this, it becomes boring. Yeah. Um, so, old tea chocolate biscuits. You better show him who's making the noise. He's actually grown a bit. Come here. Come on. You know who it is. Timmy. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Hello. Hello. Timmy's back. He's, again, he's still a 100 mile an hour mop. <laughs> uh, try and look at the, uh, try and look at the camera. He's changed colour, everyone's... Everyone keeps, lighter, me, isn't it? everyone keeps telling me he was dyed. <laughs> His colour was dyed. Uh, anyway, that's Timmy. Ah, ah, ah. Timmy's growing a bit, but he's not growing massively. What's this? Timmy! What's there that? he is! Timmy! Ooh. Timmy! Anyway, right, put him down. Bye, Timmy. Like emu. Like Roddle and emu. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> attacking you and biting you. Right, anyway, interesting about Mendelssohn playing at the church, weren't it? Yeah. Yes, 1847, Mendelssohn played there. And he's a composer. Yeah, and it said there was a bit of a kerfuffle outside the church. He didn't use that word. And I wonder if it was anti-German sentiment. I don't know. What's that? An ostrich egg. Ooh. Is it an actual egg? Yeah. It's got a, quite a few yolks. Oh, it's in. very thick, isn't it? Yeah. You can tell that the outside's very thick. Um, is it an ostrich egg? Yeah. Uh, really? Kicked, or not it? just like a duck egg or something? No, it's an ostrich. Are you going to make it? I'm going to, it's apparently it's got loads of yolks in it. Yeah, I'm going to have an omelette or something. Well, when? when? Because it'll go yeah, off. Soon. I need to go out and have it tomorrow. Soon. Yeah, have it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's uh, more like, like a fancy light bulb, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charge it up. Anyway. Even Timmy's having a brew. Mm. Is that actual tea? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You taught him well. <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> Everyone will be commenting on all the diseases you'll get. <laughs> oh, gee. He loves it. So he's actually into tea. He's a Barry's, he's a Barry's tea man. You'll make him run around even worse. <laughs> he'll be running, he'll be high on caffeine with it. Yeah. So it's quite a big space. Oh, yeah. So we'll go down one side and then down the other. Uh, and then we'll explore them bits there. Right, so nice look at the brickwork because I don't know if you can see. So you can see, I don't know if you can notice the brickwork and look at the ingrowth there from places. And like, look at the, the way it goes round. The bricks will go round there. Almost as if they were big portals or something. Now, was this a crypt or was it the undercroft? Just an undercroft, we don't know. Uh, very dodgy up there. Yeah, it's 
to run the water over. Okay. Walk down the main drag there because it might be. Oh, to get oh, in. Uh, here. Ah, right, yeah. So there you go. So just a recess. We'll go where Roy went. Anything in there? No, not really. So I'd like to think that this was a crypt, but it's just an undercroft in a church. I don't think there was a, an area here where they really stored anything to be honest with any bodies or anything like that. Bit of a suspect area at the bottom end, which I'll show you in a minute. Ripped up uh, arch there, bit of cable there, look at that cable. I always get suspicious when you see a bricked up uh, doorway like that. Uh, so 1839, I think the uh, church was built. We'll go into the centre now. Another recess there, we'll chat about, see what it's like. I'm not sure if this was just an undercroft, you know, there's no evidence that there was ever any uh, coffin or anything here. Only if that went to the outside. I reckon this is where they point up and down with the, with the bodies. Well, you don't, we don't know it was a crypt. What? Richard. Oh. Richard Ormerod, that says. What's the date on it? 1847. 1847. Uh, so James has found the sum up here. Let's have a look. So yeah, that does go to the outside there. Just natural lighting to bring it in. Yeah. And we have a gravestone, the old uh, 1970s uh, Roadworks light. And this is sacred to the memory of Mary Ann, wife of John Watson. Carlton, who died 16th of September 1852, aged 26 years. Hmm, interesting. We'll take a look in here, looks uh, very collapsed in here. Now this is more, now this is more what you would think of as a crypt with the actual shelves. So this is more what I imagine a crypt would be like. Uh, yeah, so if you look in there, looks like maybe a very limited few coffins have been stored in here, doesn't it? Maybe, maybe. And what I found astounding is these roots that find their way through. And on some of the walls, they completely covered the walls as well. But uh, yeah, fantastic to see these things hanging down. What have you found here, James? There's some headstones, I think. Quite well met, done not. Oh, yeah, it's lots of, somebody's had a bit of a wipe on them, haven't they? Samuel Edge Esquire, 1844, and John Watson, what's that, Carlton? Carlton S. Esquire. Yes. Yeah. 1852 that says I'll try yeah. and get a picture of that for you so I did the briefest of searches on the internet John Watson Carlton and I came up with these twins that were born in 1825 so if the around about the, the right sort of uh, generation uh, I typed in Manchester after it and it brought this up so uh, trained in a warehouse and married his cousin Mary she died and then he went to Australia uh, set up a business um, the project fell through and then he set up in Melbourne as a merchant now whether this is the same people right hold your horses Martin last minute check as I'm going through on the on the final edit of this video I realize James has just pointed out Mary Ann's gravestone hasn't hasn't it just then and then we find John Watson Carlton and it said on Mary Ann's gravestone wife of John Watson so it is the same people that's incredible so the 
they must have had a connection to the church and it sounds like she's died, he's gone off to Australia. Um, I'm really chuffed for found that, to be honest with you. That is uh, really good. So, yeah, and they must have been, I wonder if they were benefactors of the church or something because her grave's been brought underneath the uh, the churchyard and he's he's got like a, a, a plaque in there. Now, the only discrepancy in the stories it says that Robert Carlton went to Australia she died um what was it 1852 and then he went to Australia but then there it says his brother Robert f- followed Robert followed his brother John Carlton to Australia in 1849 now I imagine the gravestone is going to be right isn't it he possibly may have got the the year that Robert went to Australia to follow John wrong. But, hmm, all very interesting, isn't it? And I'm pretty certain I've got the right people there. It adds up, doesn't it? Anyway, cracking on. Now, if you like me, we'll just round off by looking at some of the graves because if you like me, these graves are quite interesting to see. Incredibly, that they're all oh, this graveyard's abandoned and they're all still here. But let, let's take a look at some of the names on the graves and the dates. Here sleepeth, awaiting a glorious resurrection, the mortal remains of Richard Richardson Harding, late what's that, Erdington Cumberland, who departed this life 16th of November 1847 in the 40th year of his age. Also, Jesse, relict of the above, who departed yeah. this life. July the 8th, 1875, on the, in the 67th year of her age. I'll try and get you another grave. So, sacred memory of John Hobson, who departed this life. 16th of May, 1855, aged 71 years, and Hannah, his wife. So, there you go. So, they're like uh, mid 1800s, aren't they? A lot of the graves seem to be mid 1800s, all in this part. We think this is the older part of the cemetery. Uh, that's a nice one. Well, it has been a nice one. It's had like a an indent in there, hasn't it? And it's Martha, wife of John Hotwood, who departed this life November 22nd, 1869, age 62. Her end was peace. Well, I'm glad that, Martha. Uh, what's that, look? Ken, something Ken, son of the late Captain Ken Aberdeen, who died in South America. January 11th, 1867, aged 39 years. And his sister's in there as well, aged 43. She died in Manchester. Wow. Right, so here's one. Um, and I don't know whether it's looking really good because it's in slate. Inaffection, inaffectionate. All right, it just says inaffectionate. Or oh, remembrance of Catherine, daughter of John and Elizabeth Pugh of what? Abba? Abba Hosan, oh, and if it's Wales, who departed this life January, February 26, 1874, aged 17 years, and was interred at Cheatham Hill Church. Now, I wonder if that was slate because that place was Welsh and the, that had the, the gravestone made of slate. That's uh, quite a nice touch, isn't it? So, I have read when I was looking at this, I read that this church, St. Luke's Church, was one of the richest churches. Um, in Manchester at the time back in the day mid 1800s and I would imagine that a lot of the people that were buried there that had those graves and nice stones you know these were may have been people with a little bit of money to be able to afford to be buried there not to be put into a pauper's grave back then back in the day because many of us I certainly would have ended up in a pauper's grave or at least with a little tiny stone with a number on Who'd have thought that this grand graveyard and this grand church would end up in the state that it's in now? And you can imagine those funerals, can't you be? Maybe grand affairs, um, you know, horse-drawn hearses and everything and proper Victorian affairs and everything. And they were, they were buried in this fine churchyard and look how it's ended up in this overgrown sort of like abandoned mess but very interesting isn't it the contrast anyway we never recorded a an outro so it's left for me to say thank you very much for watching from cheetah mill take care and we'll see you in the next video bye for now